Coming live from San Jose, Costa Rica is our guest this evening. Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Larissa Banting, accredited publicist, owner of LBPR, and she teaches entrepreneurs how to harness their power of publicity for profit. Welcome to the show, uh, Larissa. Thank you so much for having me, AJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to the show live from San Jose, Costa Rica. You are my first guest from Costa Rica, so this becomes uh, very special. There may be more, but this is a very special one. And we'll be talking about you know, how to get, get massive visibility without social media or ads and many things more. So exactly uh, what does an accredited publicist do? Uh, a few people may know it, but this is for the general understanding of uh, viewers, audience, not just in India, but across so many places that this show is going live. Okay, so I mean, I am a publicist and I'm accredited. So the, the accreditation uh, means that I went through, a, it was a year long process. Um, there's the Canadian Public Relations Society. There's also the American Public Relations Society. So the accreditation is a professional standing. It means that you have met um, a very stringent um, exams and case studies. And, you know, like I said, it was over the course of a year. Um, and when I passed, there was only 300 people in Canada who had attained the, the accreditation. So it, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a designation that not many publicists have, but it means that um, I've proven that I have a well-rounded understanding of how public relations works in, in general beyond just getting publicity. Um, so, right, yeah. Right. Why I asked this question was that there is a, a lot of understanding about accredited journalists than accredited advertising agencies. But in my side of this world, there is not much talk of, about accredited publicists. Um, there may be, but then maybe I'm not aware of that. But I've not met uh, anyone who says that I've been, I'm an accredited journalist, though there are many forums, people are part of those forums, and they are doing great service uh, into this field. So what does an accredited journalist, uh, do they get any benefit or do they have to stick to more rules than a general publicist would have to? Now that you have shifted from Canada to Costa Rica, where you spent most of your time does it help there or does it uh, did it help you in canada being an accredited journalist or did you have to follow more rules well i mean as as a publicist um because here's the thing like anybody like i've seen especially because of the the advent of the internet and because I'm, i mean i live in costa rica but i i work with clients literally all over the world so that's the beauty of the internet when i first moved here 20 years ago from canada uh, I had to shift and, and I had to pivot. I opened it a different business because at the time you still had to be like, I still had to be in Canada to be working in publicity, but it, the, the whole landscape has changed. So that's, um, so yeah, I, I work all over the world now, but the thing with being accredited, what it means is that um, you have a really good base. Like you have a, a well-rounded understanding because there's a lot of people who, got themselves onto you know 20 podcasts and then they call themselves a publicist like oh you know like i can get you onto you know onto podcasts or oh i can try and get you you know onto tv or whatever but they don't have the foundation of the the, the serious study because publicity is just one sliver of what public relations is so i mean public relations is just to kind of back up so everyone understands what we're talking about because um, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about what, what it is. So and generally, public relations is how a business or, say, like a, someone who's a celebrity, um, they interact with the public, right? So um, that means everything, for example, like corporations, they would uh, have a whole apartment just for crisis communications. So, you know, when um, something bad happens... How do they react? How do they put that that client, like the, the forward face to the public? And so that's what the crisis communications department does. Because as you know, like 
Um, I mean, think back, and this is going back quite a few years, but uh, the Juan Val, um, the Exxon Valdez, I don't know if you remember, was back in the 80s, and it hit, it was like the biggest natural environmental disaster, and Exxon, it was like their tanker, like ran aground in, in, in Alaska and just dumped like millions of barrels of oil into a nature reserve in the ocean. And it's in textbooks because how they reacted to it was abysmal. Like it was everything, literally a textbook, do not do this, right? Had they had a, a, a crisis communications team that knew what they were doing, it would have been a completely different um, situation. And, and what happened was because of that, Exxon's stocks plummeted, right? As did their, um, you know, their, their public face, like, you know, nobody wanted to touch them. They became a toxic company. So this is why it's so important that you, even as a small business, you know, how do you deal with when something goes wrong? Because something will, it's, it's you know, it's, it's human nature, it's life. Um, so there's that part of public relations. And then there is, you know, um, how do you get yourself, how to get your business into the media? And that's what most people think of publicity. Now, what I want to say is, this is very important. Publicity is not paid advertising. A lot of the times we get publicity gets put under that umbrella of marketing, but you don't pay to be in the media. Now, if someone's saying to you, oh, hey, I'm going to get you into this newspaper, it's only going to cost you $2,000, that is not publicity, that is paid advertising, all right? So right. publicity is where you have a neutral third party, say, like, your, for example, yourself, AJ, like, I'm on your podcast right now. You, and you haven't paid for me for it. I have not paid you. Uh, you have nothing. You're not benefiting financially by me being on here. But you've, you've asked me to come on because you feel that I have something that is worthwhile to your audience. And that right. basically is publicity in a nutshell. Right. Right. Because sometime back there was this big, big uh, story in Bloomberg. And they said that some podcasters can earn as much as $50,000 if they are, you know, connecting mm -hmm. with the right, right sort of businesses or influencers or whoever it is. That's another matter. I will be asking about basic questions today, even though some of the people will know. But why I will ask is a lot of small businesses, consultants, they are the ones who nowadays want to get uh, noticed for their work notice for their product for their service and they don't have big budgets they don't have big budgets like big companies big brands and neither they can have marketing tie-ups nor uh, with big media houses or even if you can say they cannot hire big uh, agencies if you if you let me use that word mm -hmm. so they have limited budget but they have aspirations to go higher and to a wider audience and publicity is a must so the only ground that is left for them is social media and social media then advertising and all and a little bit of work here and there so i want to ask on their behalf is that if a small business is growing up then when do they know that their business is ready for publicity because it's a confusion for so many of them how do they know okay now i should start for my publicity right well here's the thing i think a lot of people think that there's some sort of a yardstick oh when i hit six figures when i whatever and the truth is there is no yardstick i always say to people if you, the moment you hang your shingle out and say you know i have this business and people are paying me for my experience and my expertise you're ready for publicity right in fact very quickly, I'll tell you my story because publicity can grow your business in a create like crazy. When That's I first right. moved to Costa Rica, this was like back in 2002. Ooh. And I told you I had to pivot, right? I couldn't do publicity because, you know, I didn't speak Spanish. I couldn't do it here in Costa Rica. And I, I because I was not in Canada, I couldn't continue to serve my clients there. So I pivoted and I opened a destination wedding planning company. And in fact, yeah. I must mention it for the public. You are a creative person. You were a professional dancer. Yes, I was. Yeah. That one, that, be, before I got into PR, I was a dancer. And then actually from 
Um, I went on to be the publicist for a ballet company. So it all kind of came full circle. Right. Right. Um, but what I did when I, when I moved here, so I opened up this destination wedding planning company, but my clients were all like, I was looking for clients in USA and Canada primarily. I didn't, at that time, there was no social media. Like think back 2002, we were still using fax machines. We still had dial up internet. Facebook didn't exist. So you either um, spent a lot of money on magazine ads or you had publicity. Like that was, that was the two things you did. So I, I actually hired a publicist in New York. She was just starting her own agency, but she knew travel and she knew weddings. And those, I mean, as a publicist, those were not my areas of expertise at all. So I hired her and because of working with her, she, you know, we got into all these different wedding magazines. Our, our weddings got featured. I did a whole press junket up in New York City, got interviewed in a bunch of, you know, New York, like uh, Martha Stewart Living Radio, et cetera, and met the editors of all the magazines. So what happened was the next year, um, Destination Weddings and Honeymoons magazine created this thing called the A-List. It was, and they named 30 wedding planners, they said, were the top 30 in the world for Destination Weddings. And I was one of the 30. Now, do I really think I was one of the top 30 in the world, AJ? Probably of course. not. Of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to ask me that question. Well, but you know, but the thing was, it was, why was I on that list? It was the perception because the people that put this list together from the magazine saw my work. They saw me, they saw my company in all of these like modern bride, what Martha Stewart weddings, they saw me everywhere. So the perception was, oh, wow, this person is in all these wedding outlets, they must be really good. We're gonna put them on our list, right? Because of that, our four, that was our third year of business. Our fourth year of business, we hit seven figures because we were in all these magazines that, that gave us incredible visibility, much more than I could ever afford to pay for. Second of all, and this is the crucial part about publicity, it gave me the um, authority and the credibility. Now, you know, no one will buy unless they like, know, and trust you enough to part with their money. So how do you know, especially now, like everybody, you know, there's a thing with an ad, I can put an ad and say, I'm the, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. But if someone's like watching, you know, you, AJ, and they say, oh, and you're going, hey, well, like this is like, Loris is an expert in publicity. All of a sudden now my credibility is way higher. In fact, it's been studied, the study show 10 times that higher in credibility factor than an ad because again you are a neutral third party you have nothing to gain by promoting me and so that's an editorial neutral factor about about being in the media right and that's editorial not advertorial or advertisement exactly exactly so this is where and the thing is you can get started it doesn't matter if you're just your first year in business or whatever, you all have a story to tell. And like, think about publicity, like, like I always say baseball, right? Um, you know, you've got your, your little league, then you've got your minor league, and then you have the major league. Now, like major league is like the Forbes and the Entrepreneur Magazine. Your first time up to bat, you're not going to go into the major leagues. You're not going to expect to be in Forbes, your first like media outlet. But there's all of these smaller publications and podcasts and whatnot, and they're perfect for you. In fact, these small niche outlets are, are actually better for, for um, attracting customers and say being in Forbes. The reason why, because those are micro niched. Those are the people who are really interested in what you do. For I'll give you an example. We have a client. And she built a multi six figure business teaching women how to re, uh, reupholster old chairs. Now, that's a very specific niche, but we got her onto this podcast called um, Thrift Diving. And it's a podcast ex for people who'd like to go and go thrift, you know, to thrift stores or secondhand stores, garage sales, find things and then repurpose them into a new work of, of art, right? perfect audience these are the people that are exactly who she wants to get in front of so she got in front of them within a week of that podcast going live she had a thousand new subscribers on her email list 
And when the doors opened to her course being sold two weeks later, she sold 34 just from that list. And then the, obviously she sold more in the interim. But meanwhile, we got her into a story on Forbes, which was fantastic for her visibility, but she didn't get a thousand subscribers from it. Why? Because Forbes has a much broader audience, right? It's like, imagine going and fishing in the ocean. That's Forbes. Imagine going and fishing in a small pond filled with um, salmon, right? And you're a salmon fisher. Well, you're going to go to a pond with salmon fishing. So th that's right. the thing. So don't discount smaller outlets because they're not a major player. You need to have a balance of both, but those smaller outlets is where you're going to really attract the people with the, with the, the, the clients you want who are going to want to spend money with you. Right. Right, Larissa. Larry, Larry now, the second step is once you know that, okay, you want to go for publicity and mainly for small businesses or consultants, uh, they keep on trying their own stuff. But if they want to go to a PR agency or a publicist, mm -hmm. then everybody they meet and each company or an, uh, say boutique agency that they meet, they will quote different figures. But it, it can be uh, hundreds, thousands of dollars. It can be a few hundred dollars. How does a person decide what should be their budget? Should they start from asking an agency, how, will you how much will you charge? Or should they just decide about their budget and then go with that and talk to agencies or individuals who are fitting that particular budget and go with what expectations? How should they know? where they want to. They know where they want to go. They want to be published in Forbes. They want to get on CNBC. They want to go and get on CNN and everywhere. But about realistic expectations, how should they go about it? Okay. Well, first of all, I mean, if you're going to, if you're thinking you want to get to something like CNN or Forbes or whatever, you need, again, you need to have some experience behind you, right? Because this is one, the other thing you got to think about is that the media, especially like the, the big, these big dogs. And, and so, sorry to interrupt, do give the some sort of insight into how that whole uh, ecosystem in Costa Rica, in Canada, how does this work? So that Indian uh, agencies or individuals or businesses, consultants, they also get an idea how uh, the media landscape actually works down there. In, in fact, in terms of journalism, in terms of public relations, the type of relationships that you have, publicists have with the media. How does it work? So okay, that, well, you know, there are a lot of businesses who may want to get into that part of the world and then maybe they can connect, connect through you. Okay. Well, I mean, I actually, we, one of our clients was um, in India and okay. um, yeah, she, she owned a Facebook ads company. So the thing is, you have to think about what, again, because we've become a global landscape, it, unless you're going into like, you're trying to get to a, a very hyper local newspaper, most outlets are, they're global, right? Um, but you've got to find, is that story going to be of interest to that outlet? As long as the story is has merit and has something of, of interest that's going to benefit the listener or the reader, that's the most important thing. Where you're from, doesn't really have as much um, weight as it used to have, and especially since uh, you know COVID, because everybody was on Zoom. Even now, like there, a lot of the TV stations, we still have clients that get do live TV over Zoom because before you had to go to the, the TV studio, yeah. and like you know, for like CNN or NBC, the big ones, they would actually have to pay to fly the people in to go and appear on the Today Show, or whatever. That costs a lot of money. And because there's so much competition right now, it's way more cost effective to do these interviews over Zoom. So first of all, let me say that. So don't let your location prevent you from moving forward, okay? The most important thing is, is think you have to think about the audience. It's not, media is not about you. The media doesn't care about you. Let me just put that out there right now. That sounds harsh, but they don't care about you because what do they care about? They care about their clients. Their clients are the audience. If they don't give them an interesting story, the audience is going to go to their competitor. 
right? So think about, so change your mindset. Don't be thinking about, well, how can I get this newspaper to a magazine to do a story about me? This, the mindset needs to be, how can I come up with a great story idea that is going to benefit the readers of this magazine? What can I give them that nobody else is talking about? What can I do? What can I, what can I share with them? So when they walk away from spending the three minutes or that four minutes reading this magazine article, they're going to have a little bit of information to make their life a little bit better in some way in the area that I am an expert in. So when you approach the media from that perspective, it's like, hey, I'm here to help you serve your audience. All of a sudden, that's a, that's a completely different approach. And most people don't take that approach. But that shows you understand how the media works. You understand what they're trying to accomplish. So instead of being someone like bang, 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 hey, let me into your new your magazine, put an article about me. Instead, you're coming at it from, hey, how can we partner together to give the best experience possible for your readership? And that will open all the doors for you. Right, right, Larissa. Now, uh, let's talk about, you know, how to get massive publicity without social media or ads. We've come to this, but before that, these are uh, times of slowdown. Uh, global economy is, is facing its own challenges. And that's where publicity uh, can help businesses mm -hmm. a lot more, especially, you know, a lot of small businesses are online. So right. that can help them uh, during these times. And you talk of three things that one can do to supercharge their authority and visibility. What are those th three things, if you can spell them out for the audience, that this is what they can do, at least for a start? Okay. Well, because here's the thing, like, um, you know, social media is, is great, but it gets buried. There's like the algorithms can change, you know, things like right ones right now, I'm saying that Instagram is like tanking. The thing about publicity is that once one is out there, it is out there forever. Like people can Google you and it'll come up. Right. So it right. doesn't disappear. So you've got to think about what, how can I make myself stand out? So number one, what is unique about you and your business? What do you do in a way that nobody else does? And you do every single one of us has a different, we're, we're all snowflakes in the most true sense of the word because no two snowflakes are ever identical. So even though you might be an accountant, how is your approach to accounting different than all the other accountants that you know, right? There is something that you do. Nobody else does the same way. Lean into that. All right. So maybe you have like a special system. Maybe you have a different approach. Figure out what that is and really refine the messaging around that so that people can easily understand what makes you stand out. OK, so that's number one. Number two um, understand what, what, where are your ideal clients hanging out? What do they read? What do they watch? What do they listen to? You can even, if you don't know, do a poll on, on YouTube, sorry, on, on Facebook, right? Like, Hey, what's your favorite? Um, what's your, I'm looking to, for new podcasts. What's your favorite podcast about accounting or about business? Okay. Right. And they'll tell you, like, they will literally tell you, here's what we're listening to. Okay, there's where you want to go and get in front of. Again, all right, because again, everybody wants to be in Forbes, which is great, but that's fishing in the ocean. Go fish in the pond where your clients, the, where, the pond where your clients are. Don't go fishing right. in a pond where they're not, okay? So that's number two. You've got to figure out where are they at. Now, then number three is what can you come up with that's going to make help them? So maybe again, you're, maybe you're an accountant. All right. So maybe you have like, here's three simple steps that you can use. You can, you can implement this week, right? Cause again, think about um, if you wanted to, you were a weight loss coach, what article are people going to want to read? Here's how to lose 10, 20 pounds in this year, or here's how you can lose five pounds this week. People want the as the article like five pounds in a week. Okay, boom! This is instantaneous. I can do this. Whereas a year seems like forever. 
So maybe if you're an accountant, it's like, here's three steps you can take, uh, you can use like this week to lower your taxes for the next tax year, right? Give them something that's an immediate gratification that they can use because the, again, you're, this is the long, this is the marathon. You're not running a sprint with publicity. What you want to do is you want to give them something they can go and they, they implement and they're like, oh my gosh, that worked. I want to go back for more. Okay. So start thinking about it this way. You're laying the groundwork, the foundation so that pe for the sales, publicity, publicity is not about getting the sale. Publicity is about supporting the mechanisms that you're going to use to get the sale. That means getting people to like you, to know you, to trust you enough to say yes when it comes time to ask for the, the dollar, okay, or the rupee, whatever it is. So that's of three things. What's three, what makes you unique, right? So you, you want to build on that expertise get in front of your, your ideal clients where they are and then give them something that they can take and implement to see a, some sort of, it doesn't have to be a massive change. We're talking like not the hair on fire problem. We're talking like how do they get that little stone out of their shoe? And that's right. going to lead them to the hair on fire problem like with you. Okay. So right. does, that, does that make sense? Like, yes, yes, it does. It does. And, and how can people who have no money, no budget, and they don't want, want to use social have any budget, how they still get massive publicity? Will these three methods work? Uh, yeah. They go do about how, and how, what? Uh, are there any other things that they can do for themselves? Absolutely. Okay. So they can reach a level that they can actually pay to a media agency. Yeah. So this is the thing. Like, um, you were asking about like the, the pricing of, of agencies generally you, any, anywhere from three to ten thousand dollars a month and it's three usually ten thousand dollars a month here what you're gonna pay. If, if, if you that that's around quite a bit of money more than two lakh Indian rupees to anywhere between six to seven lakh Indian rupees that's only top brands top clients pay only few clients will be there who will be paying more money than that. So that's a good amount of money. I guess Indian mon Indian agencies should get money in dollars uh, while working in, in India. That would make them happy. But yeah. that's, 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 that's as I said, this is as per different regions, different uh, things. In India, right. it had its own way of pricing. Right. Price. So, but I mean, a lot of people, a lot of small business owners, you're not going to be ready to hire a publicity agency right, right off out of the gate. But you can still, I mean... 30 minutes a day, you, if you just like, again, like you, this is a muscle and it's, it's the marathon. So don't expect like, Oh, I went and I pitched a newspaper or I, I pitched this magazine. They haven't answered me. This doesn't work. It's a numbers game. Even as with all the experience that I have, I mean, I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I'm a credit. I'm one of the few hundred that are accredited. I was, I was a journalist. I still, I mean, the, the top publicists have maybe a 15% um, hit rate. So that means out of 100 pitches that we'll put out, 15 will get a yes. Okay. And it doesn't mean that you're not good at doing publicity. It means it's, it's, it's all timing, right? You might have a great story, but maybe that outlet just ran something similar, or maybe they're not, they're, they're next um, two publications have already got a different theme. Um, you know, it, maybe they already have all their, their stories spoken for. One of my, I have two friends who are writers for Forbes. They have four, con like four stories under contract per month. They get 1,500 pitches per month for four stories. All right. So th this is the thing, like, you've got to, like, keep going. Like, don't get discouraged. Um, a free... Again, publicity is free. Like you're playing a publicist for their time and their expertise, but you you can go and do the same thing on your own. Just like you you know you could pay someone to to change the oil in your car, or you could do it yourself. It's going to take longer. It's going to be messier, but you can still do it yourself. Same thing with publicity, right? Um, I'll give you a, a tool you can use that is free. It is called Haro. 
H A R O. Help stands for help a reporter out. When you're getting started, this is probably the best um, the best tool that you can use, and it, and it is free. So what you do is is basically public like um writers are looking for experts to quote in their out uh, in their stories. So this is a way of matching. It, the writers will put their query in, like, "Hey, I'm looking for, um, you know, uh, an accountant who can ex who can help me to explain to me, you know, what are the tax implications of blah blah blah." I'm just making this up, right? But they have all everything from medical to sports to travel to everything under the sun. There is always there's always it comes out three times a day, Monday through Friday. Um, it's based on New York time. Uh, but they have over usually about 150 queries per email. That means that there's over 450 queries per day. Right. So, um, and there's a good chance you might find something that works for you. So, what I all you do is, as soon as it comes into your in your inbox, stop, take a look. Is there something that uh, pertains to you? If not, let it go. It'll be a, it's like a train. There's another one coming down the track. If there is something that works for your expertise, go and send in, answer the question, give them the best information you possibly can. And I always say, give them something that you would charge a thousand dollars for. Don't give them the free tip that everybody knows. They want the, the juicy only you would know this because you're an expert and you've been doing this for so long. And that is how you can get into major publications. I had one of my one of my students, because I have a small course where I teach this, her first time doing this, she got into business.com. Um, one of my other students, she in her first week, she put out five, she answered five queries. She got into three outlets, including one. She was in the state, she got into an outlet in Australia. So this is, I mean, we're talking like Forbes, Entrepreneur, like, you know, the CNN News, like there's some really heavy hitters that use Haro. So if you were going to do nothing else to get started with publicity, at least try and use Haro. There's also another one called Quoted, uh, Q-W-O-T-E-D. Okay, it works the same, Quoted, yeah. It works the yeah. same way as, as um, they don't get as, you don't get, as many pitches like um, queries per day and they're usually a little bit longer term and you get three for free per month. But, but with Haro it's free. Like you just sign up and you're going to get those 400, 500 queries every single day. So right. that's, right. that's the best possible. I mean, all of us as professional publicists, we still use Haro and quote it on top of right. 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 So we talked a lot about free stuff and you are running a business. So we must talk about business at the end. If everything can be free, then how will the business? That's run? right. And that's and that's where which is very important for a lot of people who are running their businesses. So let's talk about LBPR. What does LBPR do? What is the type of clients you focus on? Or is it that you have got like people from different uh, different sectors can approach? How does it work? Yeah, so we have our our um, our agency is bespoke. So we're doing all like you know we don't we, we do our research. We see like who are who are our clients' ideal target. We come up with um, really specific uh, story ideas that we pitch out to the media and follow up. Um, we work with entrepreneurs. So uh, you, generally, we're looking for entrepreneurs who are making you know minimum half a million dollars a year and up. So people who are a little more established, because again. You know, you're not going to start paying for a PR agency until you've got some money uh, coming in on a regular basis and you can afford it. Right. Um, we also have uh, because I really believe in helping on entrepreneurs get started in small businesses. We do have um, a number of offers for do, uh, do it yourself. So our, we have our done for you agency. But then I have all of these courses that start, you know, our our uh one on podcasting and the other on pitching starts at $27. So we try to make it really affordable for, for people to give them the tools and the training so they can get started with the idea of eventually then they can come to us when they're ready. 
right and how do uh, people connect with you with uh, with you as well as your business if they need to do business with you how does it work really simple um larissabanting.com i'm the only larissa banting in the world very small <laughs> family and larissa is not a very co common name so if you go to larissabanting.com um we have links to everything all of our offers uh are um we actually have a even a free um media calendar to get you going uh if you want more information about working with us for our agency it's there and we also have the links to our 27 dollar podcasting um get you started kit right right larissa so my my last question uh, is to understand is that there is pr agencies now a lot of people know about it now a new term has come is podcast agencies. How is it coming up in your part of the world? I mean, including Canada, because Canada is the big uh, people uh, consumer of podcasts then. after US, I guess. Uh, it even left US behind for some time, or is it still that way? So how does it work? Is our podcast agencies an extension of PR agencies? Are they part of it? Or is it a separate thing that has come up, how do clients deal with uh, with separate entities at the same time? Should they just hire a PR agency and they will understand, okay, we have got podcasts included in that because video podcast, audio podcast, so many things are moving uh, at the same time. Now you see, even TikTok is supposedly coming out with podcasts, podcast channels. So that's something I read today itself. So that's uh, that's something very, very new developing if it works that way but that's the hint we are getting so if it works like that how does a client understand should they go for a podcast agency should they go for a pr agency which also deals with podcast uh, or is it that uh, there will be a combination of all things at the same time it's like you know boutique agency but has everything together how do you see this happening and how do you see this particular stuff panning up well i mean as a as a PR agency, like we do everything. So we do podcast pitching, we do magazines, newspapers, um, we do television, radio. Uh, we also for will write articles, for example, for our uh, as as a featured writer, for, okay. because a lot of publications will take um, outside writers, and uh, we also do hard row and quote it. So we do outbound as well as inbound. Now there are some agencies, like you were saying, all they do is podcasting. Because um, for a lot of people, like I always say podcasting is kind of like the, um, it's like the, the gateway drug to be as a joke, because it is, it's like the e, there's 2 million podcasts in the world and there's a 1500 per week coming online. So there's so many podcasts that is, and there's so many different niches. So I always feel like that's kind of the easiest way for someone who's never done PR to kind of get their foot in the door, to get uh, their messaging honed to get comfortable talking about themselves because a lot of this is also mindset a lot of people feel like oh i can't do pr because i don't want to brag no one wants to hear about me bragging mm -hmm. about myself and that's the furthest thing from the truth so there's a lot of a mindset because you know i don't know about you but when I'm growing up we're always taught especially for women Oh, don't draw attention to yourself don't brag about yourself no one wants to hear you go on don't don't talk about yourself and then you get PR and it's like, talk about yourself, brag about what you've done. So there, there has to be a bit of a mind shift, um, mindset shift. So, but that's the thing. So we say like public, if you're going to do nothing else, start with podcasting because you're going to have the easiest way. And then once you feel like you've got your, your, your feet wet and you're confident about your messaging, because when you go into television, for example, television, you only have three minutes and you have to have your messaging down pat. You have to be able to look at the camera. You have to be very comfortable. And we normally don't throw anyone into, into TV until they've gone through a lot number of podcasts and other media interviews so that they have their messaging totally buttoned up. So I think that's why there's been a growth of podcast uh, agencies, just because a lot of people don't, again, they don't understand how the machinations work of getting into magazines and newspapers, et cetera. But podcasting seems like something they they understand, um, especially in North America. Um, there's a, a massive amount of people who listen to podcasts on a regular basis. 
So there's a hunger for that. There's a need for that. Um, and I feel like once people get into, they get themselves onto a number of podcasts, then they'll start thinking, oh, well, maybe now I can start thinking, getting myself into a magazine. So, um, it, yeah, I would say if you're going to start anywhere, start with podcasts and then work your way through the other types of media outlets. Right. Right. There is a well put. You have uh, added so much of, you know, information, insights into this whole media landscape and how uh, small businesses can especially, you know, tread this difficult path if they look at it things very nicely and if they start small and attain big status. To recap, what would you tell entrepreneurs to just simply not remember everything but this a few things that they can remember uh, that they should think about publicity? Just okay. Think. Number one, this is crucial to getting yourself credible and visible and putting yourself out as an authority. Okay. So don't leave PR for somewhere down the future. Get started today. Decide what is your unique special sauce? What makes you stand out from everybody else in your field? Um, come up with what is my messaging and what can I share as a story with the media that is going to help their audience? That's going to make them have something they can walk away with and implement right away. And nothing major, but just a small little um, help to their business. Uh, start with Haro. Go sign up for help, help a reporter out. Go sign up for Quote It and start just going through and seeing what they're look, asking for. What, the, what those journalists are asking for will help you start thinking about, oh, what kind of a story can I pitch to get myself into the media? Okay. And then start list, thinking about, ask your audience, what podcast do you like to listen to? And then you can put together your list and start pitching those podcasts to get yourself into those media outlets where your clients are. Great. You summed it very well. Larissa, on this note, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed. Thanks for having me, KJ.